Hey everyone, it's Jamie with The Outer Rim. Thanks for stopping by. As many of you know, I've got a very large Star Wars themed Halloween display that I put in my yard. And in that display, I have a couple of talking Jawas. And in today's episode, I want to show you how I made mine. So stick around. My wife and I first made these Jawa costumes for our six-year-old twins for Halloween back in 2006. It just so happened that our local science museum was putting on a Star Wars themed display at that time. Members from the 501st were trooping at the museum, so my kids put on their costumes and we headed down there. They soon became the center of attention and would occasionally even utter, Utini! They were swarmed with people wanting to take pictures with them. It was a lot of fun. At that time, there were no pre-made Jawa robes or masks or eyes like there are now. We had to figure out how to do everything from scratch. We followed the tutorial from longtime Star Wars prop site TK409.com. I'll put a link to this in the description below. We followed his pattern for making the robe using a basket weave cotton material. We dyed it brown and frayed the sleeves and the bottom hem. I made the eyes by putting orange LEDs in a foam core disc and then inserting the disc into a short section of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. I also added some crinkled tin foil to the inside to help reflect the light. I glued these to the cheek area of a Halloween face mask that I had painted black. I covered the eye openings with a black screen material so the kids could see out but no one could see in. I powered the eyes with a 9 volt battery. I've saved these costumes all these years and decided to repurpose them for my Halloween display. To do this, I needed to build a PVC frame to hold them in position. I first tried this just using friction fit so I could pose them, but this did not work all that well. So this year, they got an upgrade. I found these great kits at Spider Hill Prop Works. They have specialized PVC joint fittings that are adjustable and work with one inch PVC pipe. I highly recommend you get the black knobs with them so you can adjust your figure without having to use a tool. You attach the joints to the pipe with self-tapping screws that come with the kit. The slotted grooves in the joint allow you to loosen these and twist them a few degrees each way to assist with posing. The mounting base fittings allow you to attach the figure to a wooden platform. Once assembled, I added some foam padding to fill out the shoulders and arms a bit. A bag with packing material was used to fill out the torso. We added some black wool gloves, or you can get jersey gloves, and a bandolier belt with leather pouches I got on eBay. If you have a 3D printer, you can make a very realistic ion blaster. I just threw together some crude plumbing parts from the hardware store with a wood base that I'd made. Now for the really fun part, making him talk. To accomplish this, I used a sound card from Adafruit and a small powered speaker. I recommend the 16 megabyte version of the sound card as the two megabyte won't have enough room for your audio files. This board is easy to use and no real programming or microcontroller are needed. You have some control over how the files are played simply by how you name the files. And I'll go into more detail about this a little later. Let's go over the connections. First, you need to power the sound card. There are multiple options for doing this. I used a micro USB cable and a phone charger. But you could also use a lithium polymer battery if you needed more portability. The card has 11 trigger ports. You can trigger the sounds to play with either a button, a motion sensor, or a step pad. 
If using a button, make sure to use a momentary type button and solder it to one of the trigger ports and ground on the sound card. In this example, I used trigger number seven. If using a motion sensor, be sure to use one that has normally open terminals on it. Most motion sensors are normally closed. And if you use this type by mistake, it will play the sound files continuously until it senses motion and then it will stop. This is the opposite behavior from what you want. I have a link to the motion sensor I used in the description below. To get the sound files on the soundboard, just connect it to your computer with a USB cable. It will show up as a drive and you can drag and drop the sound files onto the card. Files must be in either the WAV or OGG formats. There are five different trigger effects. For my purposes, I use the random trigger option. To do this, I named my files T07 because I'm using trigger number seven, then the characters R-A-N-D for random, then zero through nine dot O-G-G. This way, when someone presses the button, it will randomly play one of the 10 sounds. Alternately, you can also play them in a specific order by using next in the file name. So for example, T07 next zero dot OGG through T07 next nine dot OGG. Once you have the sound files transferred, it's time to test the audio. You can use any powered speaker with a 3.5 millimeter line input. I've used both the Voice Booster model 1505 and the budget-friendly AYL mini speaker. The Voice Booster also comes with a headset and it's one of the original Stormtrooper voice boxes. It has great sound quality, it plays very loud if needed, and has a really long battery life. The AYL is relatively inexpensive, but still sounds adequate and has a rechargeable battery. I'll have links to both of these options below. The final step is to put it all together. Once you figure out the basics of how to do this, you can add voice to any character or creature. I don't know what all this trouble is about, but I'm sure it must be your fault. There is a great disturbance in the force. <laughs> Well, I hope that this video puts you on the fast track to creating your own talking creatures. In this video, I featured some clips from my Halloween 2021 video. And if you haven't seen that one yet, go back and watch it because I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it. And if you learned something from this or got inspired, please give me a thumbs up. I have some absolutely insane builds planned for next year and I cannot wait to share them with you. So please subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I upload new videos and come back to the Outer Rim where anything is possible.